Chairman, uh, thank you all for staying a bit late today and not going uh, directly uh, to visit uh, uh, Taipei. So, unfortunately, Javei, who is the primary author of this paper, is not able to be here today, so I'll be presenting this work for him. Uh, this work is about uh, the monitoring of uh, meniscus motion at the nozzle orifice uh, with capacitive sensors for inject applications. Yeah. So the outline of the talk will be as follows. I will first, of course, start with a short introduction, then talk about the sensing principles, uh, the measurement system, present our results, and finish with some conclusions. I'm pretty much sure that all of you here I've already used an inject printer, uh, at least to print some documents, uh, but in the industry uh, it is also widely used for many other kind of applications. For example, you can use it for printing solder bumps, you can also use it for printing, in this case here, um, um, transistors, or make transistors for flexible displays. It is uh, more and more uh, used now for 3D printing technology, and it is even used for printing uh, human cells, in this case, and you can maybe think in the future to use it for printing a whole organ. Um, so, of course, it is not very important uh, if you have a missing droplet when you print a paper, but when you print a, um, a TFT or a, a, a flexible display or an organ, then if you have a missing droplet, this can result maybe in the end in a missing pixel or even a missing part of an organ. So that's not something that you want, of course. Um, so it is very important that uh, we make sure that all the droplets are very precisely um, um, fired, and we know that they all, all have been fired. Um, so this is the um, uh, generic uh, um, structure of, uh, of a printing head. You see here, so this is uh, um, the liquid channel. On one side you have the ink reservoir, on the other side you have the, the nozzle for the firing of the droplets. And at the top of this channel you have an actuator, which is a piezoelectric actuator. So when you uh, send the, the firing signal, this actuator will generate a uh, pressure wave that will fire the droplets. Um, in uh, industrial uh, applications, you want to have arrays of these, uh, of these printing heads for increasing the, uh, the output. Um, as I told you before, then it is very important that we uh, make sure that all the droplets are precisely fired. Um, because um, instead of a droplet, you can, for example, have a, a, an air bubble or the, or the nozzle can be clogged. So uh, in order to, to be sure uh, that you fire droplets, uh, what you want is to sense, to add a sensor uh, somewhere around the nozzle to see if the droplet has been fired. And then you can send this uh, signal back to the, to the printing head in case the, the droplet has not been fired. And you can start again the, the process. Uh, there are two main uh, methods for uh, sensing um, if a droplet has been fired or not. Uh, one of those is to actually use the, the uh, actuator, the piezo unit actuator, as a sensor as well. So after you have fired the droplet, you send an acoustic wave to, to fire the droplet and you sense the acoustic wave back. Then depending on uh, if the droplet has been fired or not, the wave is different and you can just sense if the fire has been, has been um, fired. The main limitation for that um, is, uh, for this the type of method, is that you cannot use both uh, the sensor as a sensor and actuator at the same time. So you need to wait for the, for the process to happen before you can know if the, the droplet has been fired or not. The other kind of, uh, of in-situ uh, sensing technology is a capacitor, so you place, you place this uh, capacitive sensor um, uh, after the nozzle, so once again you need to wait for the droplet to be fired, and then the droplet, if it is there, will change the, capacitive, um, um, the capacitance of the whole system. So there again you need to wait for a droplet to be fired before you know if it is there or not. Also, uh, in the case you have an array of, uh, of printing heads, you can have um, uh, misfired uh, droplets from the next uh, printing head, and that can end up to, 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 the, to the detector of another printing head. It is not uh, fired straight. So our approach is a bit different. We want to actually include this um, capacitive sensor inside the nozzle. So we place it at the exit of the nozzle, so that, so that we uh, can uh, control or at least detect the meniscus motion uh, inside the nozzle. And if we see that instead of, uh, of ink or whatever you have inside, you have air bubble, you can start the, the process before it has actually been started or been finished. Um, um, so uh, for um, um, yeah, sorry. yes, this is the um, uh, the sensor that has been previously uh, reported. Uh, it is made out of silicon, so we use a 3D bulk micro machining technique to fabricate this uh, this nozzle. Uh, you see here, so the nozzle uh, opening is about 40 micron, and on the side walls you have the three electrodes for the capacitance electrodes. Um, the capacitance when the nozzle, the sensor was uh, empty, is about one to two picofarads, and when it is full with um, with the water, for example, in this case, then the capacitance uh, goes up to 15 picofarads. So, of course, for such low capacitance, 
um, you have a very, very small signal. So the signal to noise ratio is, uh, is quite low usually. Um, Especially that we need to measure this uh, this um, um, signal at a frequency of few tens of kilohertz, so you can uh, get actually lots of noise in this uh, in this bandwidth. So uh, in order to uh, increase the signal to noise ratio, we used a uh, dedicated uh, readout technique uh, based on the lock-in amplifying technique. Uh, what what happens is that we uh, get the signal, we modulate it to a higher frequency. Uh, then we uh, amplify the signal. Uh, of course, because of the amplification, you will uh, get uh, a um, flicker noise, which, is, which will be at a much lower frequency. Then we demodulate the signal, and at the same time, we actually modulate the, uh, the, the, the flicker noise from the amplifier, so that you can get rid of it by uh, adding a low-pass filter and, getting on and keeping only the um, amplified signal. So using this technique, we have been able to, um, um, to get uh, very nice signals with a um, 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 uh, 10 atofarads uh, uh, capacity uh, measurements at a frequency of uh, 100 kilohertz. But as you can see here, uh, the, um, how the, the readout system is quite big. It's actually uh, very bulky, especially if you want to include that uh, into an array of print, print heads. So um, we tried to decrease the, the, the size of the um, of the whole system by uh, designing an ASIC. Uh, the ASIC was 1.1 millimeter to 1 .5, uh, times 1.5 millimeter in size, so it is easily uh, um, added to, uh, to a print head. And this uh, ASIC uh, uh, then had the um, had the um, amplifi amplification um, components as well as the demodulation. In this case, for demodulation, we use the chopping technique. Um, the power uh, used by this, uh, this ASIC was 2 milliwatts at 5 volts uh, um, voltage. So this is the noise measurements right after the amplifier. So this is the noise due to the amplification system. Um, here you have the uh, noise corner for due to so the flicker noise. The measurement was at about 20 kilohertz. So the corner noise is at about 20 kilohertz. And you have here the... Um, the, um, the um, the 3 dB uh, bandwidth is at about 1.1 megahertz, meaning that the available uh, bandwidth is from 20 kilo kilohertz to 1.1 uh, megahertz. Um, as I told you before, the, we measure the signal at a frequency of about a few tens of kilohertz. So if you want to modulate it to a proper frequency, uh, if you don't if you want to do that well, you need to modulate it at about, let's say, 1 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz, which is well inside our bandwidth, which is 20 kilohertz to 1.1 megahertz. So um, in order to test this uh, sensor plus ASIC, we have designed a PCB. So this is the PCB. Uh, you can mount the, uh, the sensor on the PCB. The PCB has a small hole for the droplet to go through the, through the nozzle and then going on the other side of the, of the PCB. And uh, you can also mount the, uh, the ASIC together with the, with the PCB. On top of the sensor, we uh, have added these inkjet pipettes uh, that will fire the, the droplets. So this is the measurement uh, test setup, so the setup apparatus. Um, so what is important to see here? Uh, you have here the PCB with the, the inject pipettes. Um, you have on top of it the firing system. So when we uh, uh, add the actuation signal to the, uh, to the actuator, it will uh, start uh, um, giving a pressure wave to fire this, the, the droplets. What is important to know is that the signal was synchronized with two cameras here and here to optically see what is happening at the exit of the nozzle together uh, with an oscilloscope. So you can see what is happening both optically as well as electrically at the same time, of course. Uh, so this, uh, this is the main result. Um, what you see, so we uh, had an actuator pulse of 100 volts uh, for 60 microseconds. You see that the, um, the biggest, oh, sorry. You see that the, the, the biggest drop is after about 75 microseconds. And if you go back to the electrical measurements, uh, you see that the uh, biggest, the highest capacitance is after 80 microseconds, which is way in accordance with what we see optically. Then this uh, electrical signal, uh, the capacitance go down to uh, zero after about 170 microseconds. This is basically when the, the after the firing of the of the droplets, this is when the meniscus goes right at the at the edge of the nozzle. Then this capacitance actually goes down to negative. This is due to the fact that we don't measure um, absolute capacitance, but a relative capacitance, a capacitance relative to, um, to when the, 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 the nozzle is full. 
So when uh, the, um, the nozzle actually retracts inside the, the, the nozzle because of the pressure wave that goes back after the firing of the, of the droplet, then you see this uh, negative capacitance here. Then you see that the signal starts oscillating. This is due to the fact that the, uh, the meniscus actually uh, oscillates inside the nozzle back and forth because of the uh, damped uh, acoustic waves. Um, so I will go to the um, conclusions. The conclusion, uh, we can say that we have um, basically uh, tried, or we have done it, embedded a uh, capacity sensing system for uh, inside the nozzle of an uh, inkjet um, system to demonstrate the monitoring of the, of the meniscus in real time inside the nozzle. So this uh, sensor, together with the ASIC, was uh, able to uh, monitor the, uh, the motion of the meniscus inside the, uh, the nozzle orifice. And we can later on use this, uh, this information to know if the droplet is there or not and to detect the missing uh, uh, droplets, for example. So in order to miniaturize the, the readout circuits, we use an ASIC uh, that we can add together with the, with the sensor and implement directly inside the print heads. Um, the uh, principle of this, uh, of this concept has been proven by uh, the good coherence between uh, optical measurements together with the electrical uh, measurements. I would like to, uh, together with the, with the authors, of course, I would like to uh, thank the DMS ICT group for their technical support as well uh, during fabrication as well as uh, during the measurements. And I would like to uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you.